Hey guys, Wadox Studios here, and today I figured I'd go over a topic that seems to be giving people a lot of trouble, um, and that's local multiplayer, like split screen. Um, so I'll do Loki multi test. Um, I figured uh, I'd talk on a few things here um, and kind of point out some changes from UE4 to UE5 that tends to be kind of throwing people for a loop. So, um, in UE4, uh, a, lo a lo uh, local multiplayer game, um, you could, there was a project setting that was called skip, um, first, yeah, skip assigning gamepad to player one which allowed you to test with the keyboard and mouse on player one and then test with the gamepad on player two. This this doesn't do anything in Unreal Engine 5.1 and going forward, or 5.2 and 5.3 preview for that matter, I've tested. Uh, it, the setting is just broken, ultimately. The other thing that seems to be causing confusion is um, if you check out the third person character blueprint, you'll see that you have this new enhanced input local player subsystem and the mapping context. Um, and the timing at which this mapping context is applied is causing, you know, side effects outside of um, what you would consider a normal test and editor play mode, right? So um, the editor has this number of players built into it net mode is you know standalone listen server or client but for local multiplayer this is a little different your number of players would still be one and then the server or should i say the local index one is going to control creating new local multiplayer controllers which leads me to the next topic um and that is that the create uh, this node here create local player doesn't appear to be working with the auto incrementation so a lot of the Unreal Engine 4 tutorials are just unreliable to follow because you don't get the behavior that you used to get in Unreal Engine 4 and UE5 so I'm going to take you through um, how to correct this or work around this problem. So first off, we don't want to spawn the default pawn class because we want to be able to spawn multiple characters. And if we have this set here, it's going to spawn the default. It's going to handle that spawning for you. It's going to basically look for a player start and then spawn one character. Um, second off, we're going to modify the game mode, which kind of controls that logic. We're going to override that and we're going to say on event begin play. Um, let's find a find all actors of class. Uh, and basically what we want to do is we want to get all of the player starts. Right? And then we're going to get a random. And then um, we're going to get its logo get actor location um, and let me think about this for a second um, is that how we really want to handle this you know what instead of doing that We'll just use the first in, first out method. So we'll say for each of these. Let's promote this to a variable and store it. And then we'll create a local player off of it. And then we need this get actor transform. Uh, 
And then right here, we are going to need to get the enhanced input player subsystem. And we are going to do a branch here. And we're gonna say, if the array index, actually, if it's greater than zero, then we want to add the mapping context to that controller, the local controller that was made because base, essentially here, this means that we are not player one. And then we are going to spawn the third person character. And we want to do that at this transform. And then right after we spawn it, we're going to possess, uh, actually we need the index to know which player controller uh, to possess with. Again, this is not player one. And then down here, if we are player one, we're gonna do the same thing, but it's gonna be a little different. So I'm gonna copy this node. controller from index zero um, get the enhanced input local player multi subsystem add the mapping context uh, same thing we're gonna spawn the third person we're going to grab this transform And then we are going to possess um, which I need to get this all right and then I'll just say here we are player all right, so this overrides that behavior on game mode begin play. It gets basically all of the player starts and then for each, it's gonna create a player, either the player one or not player one. Um, so this will continue to go up with however many player starts you add. So if I copy the player start, paste it, hit play, we now have two players with a split screen. Um, so this is top player, and then if I turn this controller on, it'll be the bottom player. Um, actually, uh, let me say that again. Because we don't skip the player controller with player one, um, the first controller controls the top, and the second controller would control the bottom. And you will have to have both controllers on before you hit play in order for it to actually work. Um, so... Keep, do keep that in mind too. Um, the window has to also have focus. So, you know, make sure that you've clicked inside of the viewport in order for this to work or you can, you know, hit full screen um, and then click the window to give it back focus and uh, get it to work that way. Um, Sometimes in Windows 10 or 11, you can have this issue where the sec, you know, the second controller don't want to control the player. Um, 
but yeah if we were to copy another player start and paste it we would then have three so it's going to create an index for each player start so that's the way this this kind of works um yeah and as always the safest way to test things is to uh do a standalone game so i'm gonna delete this third one i'm gonna do standalone hit save and um make sure both of my controllers are on for whenever this loads up and there we go there's one there's the other um and this should give you what you need in a packaged game um i will include a link to my patreon in the description um and my patreon will more than likely have uh, a stripped down example of this that you know you could readily download um and I'll include it in like the $5 tier or something like that. But thank you guys. Like, subscribe, and catch y'all later.